fucking tired. But I am going to get tired of reviewing this. No doubt. Hey folks, Joseph Sabora here. Last week I reviewed Dario Gentile's original horror masterpiece, Suspiria. Still an excellent film about one young ballet dancer who's American who was transferred to a dance academy in Germany where something seems to be suspicious where a young girl who just escaped from the school just found out the secrets behind all this it turned out to be the secret of the blue iris that she begins to figure it out as she overheard um, that leads to a secret room inside this um, particular dance academy yeah I mean which looks very royal too the way you enter I mean the the exterior is all in red but when you get in it's like it's like all these royal palaces that you saw but then you go inside to to all these rooms and everything something something crazy is about to happen especially at night too like um now with all the grisly murders that was happening to one student joining with her friend at the apartment we begin to see a lot of um a lot of witchcraft that's happening that led to that too where we found out who who the witches really were it was casted by the teachers I mean we begin to see like deaths of, of a blind man who got uh, mauled by his German Shepherd you know after you saw the the statue of a gargoyle flying all the way down landing to the spot of the plaza yeah it just ripped his float out you see a lot of maggots coming from the roof of the attic. You begin to see um, the fact that they took uh, Sarah's corpse. And then that's where you find out the witch that they just created. Who had to be responsible for all of this. Everything that was going on. And the music you'll never forget. That gets stuck in your head too. Uh, it had a lot of subtlety in there. It's a mystery at times too. You can even tell and it had a lot of fear, a lot of music going around, everything that really works. Um, maybe they could have added maybe more of, of the ballet recitals, maybe some more of the performances they would have done. I, I mean just to make the movie a little longer but that's okay. Um, it's the perfect pace for only 99 minutes and rightly so. But now, let's get to this over-pretentious, tedious, overrated remake that Italian filmmaker Lucia Gadagnino, the same man who gave us films like The Protagonist, I Am Love, A Bigger Splash, and most of all, Call Me By Your Name. Yes, he actually directed that one, which is a great film, in my opinion. This was not a great follow-up for him. But apparently this was his personal film to date, as he claims. And this is his version of Suspiria. Which seems like it borrows uh, the theme of motherhood. Joining in with half of his um, film that Argento has done, which in turn was based on the essay, uh, Suspiria di Potifondas, and they just had to add some more to the story just to clock around 2 hours and 26 minutes, which is over long. It drags so long, too, just to figure out what's going to happen. Because now we're just going to go for a different kind of story that will lead to this. And I I was not impressed at all the first time I saw it. 
The trailer didn't impress me. I knew it wasn't. And having to watch the film was even worse. What made me felt appalled and flabbergasted was the fact that everyone actually praised this piece of shit. Well, yeah, because nowadays today's critics aren't really that smart. But apparently it did have polarizing um, reactions here. Because at least there are some critics out there who agree that this was a mess. But others just praise it just for the sake of it. Um, even the director, Argentel, actually he had panned the film completely. The only thing he praised was the film's design. That's all. He doesn't even care about that. And I don't blame him, actually. But, you know, here's one thing that's going to give me an inferiority complex. Was that originally, there was going to be the first time that they were going to do a remake of this. And that was going to be directed by David Gordon Green. The same man who gave us Undertow and Pineapple Express. And if that version was going to be closer to the original film that Dario Gento had wrote and directed, yeah, he co-wrote, then I guarantee you maybe this will improve something. They probably respect the source material. They probably add more things that didn't quite add in the original film. It'll still have obtain the the violence and, and gore that's in there yeah because it was an ultra violent film too I mean there's a lot of gore so if, if it obtains all this stuff and the story and and the characters and all then I would say yeah I, I would probably recommend that version but no doubt about it I would always respect the original film too but it never happened because we learned that David Gordon Green felt like it was just unnecessary. Felt like maybe this isn't working out due to the the found footage boom that was going on in the 2010s. Bullshit, I know. So what do you know? He went on to do. <laughs> The, the Halloween, the 2018 reboots. And yeah, he was going to cast uh, Natalie Portman for the part of Susie. That could have been interesting. Even though she went on to do the film Black Swan, which she won an Oscar for. So that's very surprising that this could have worked. I don't know. But one thing's concern here is that they got Dakota Johnson in, as the lead. The role that the Jessica Harper had played in the original. Which, by the way, she had the cameo in the film. I'm going to talk about that. But Dakota Johnson, I'm sorry. She may have her good looks. She may be flexible and all. But she's a terrible actress. I didn't care for her in films like um, Need for Speed. It wasn't really a good film anyway. I didn't like How to Be Single. I, I hated The Social Network. I'm sorry. She's also the worst thing about that. Most of all, I incredibly, immensely hated the Fifty Shades of Shit trilogy. I mean, her character is just as dumb as ever. I mean, at times you think she's going to be smart to get rid of the guy, but no, she's not. She's just stupid. And I know she's recently in a movie called The High Note. And I don't know, man. You know, there, there could have been so many better actresses out there. They had to go for her. I know, because she was casted in a film called The Bigger Splash that the same director did. I don't know, man. I could have had so for someone better. Because 
her acting just just uh, got me cringy. I mean, I don't know. Her acting is totally cringeworthy. It sounds like porno acting to me. It's it's crazy. I don't know. And I sense that it had some special effects here and there, but all of that is just a mess. Not only that, though, the film also had a lawsuit, too, when, when this was going on, um, that um, the film distributor, Amazon Studios, because, yeah, these are the same guys who gave us Amazon.com, where you can just order movies, TV shows, and other stuff that you can buy. But not only that, but you have Amazon Prime, where you can also, you know, be able to watch their original programmings and other stuff too. You know, with uh, your Fire Stick that you got. Anyway, they were being sued by for copyright infringement for the artist of Anna Mantita. Because it features two images that were present in the teaser trailer, which was called Entitled Rape Scene. But then the following month, um, in the next trailer, uh, it got removed. And um, so apparently they, they sort of had an unclosed settlement over that, but it wouldn't matter anyway. I know, because they're trying to go for the European style, exactly what they were hoping for. Wouldn't make a difference anyway. Uh, let's get to this review. Stars Dakota Johnson, Tilda Swinton, Mia Goff, Angela Winkler, Ingrid Caven, Alina Fokina, Sylvia Testu, Renee Sotanka Dyke. Christine Labate, Magosa Bella, Fabrosa Sachi, Jessica Harper, and Corey Grace Moretz. Yeah, she's in this movie, and obviously, she needs to fire her agent. Because it's really sad that she had to be in this. If I want to see her in a better remake, I'll watch uh, Let Me In. It's written by David uh, Kaganish, which is, of course, based on the original film from 1977 by Dario Gento and Daria Nicolotti, and is directed by Lucha Gardagnino. The movie began set in 1977 in Berlin, Germany, where we meet an American ballet student named Susie Banian, who's played by Dakota. I can't act for shit, but I'm going for my beauty looks, Johnson. And I know she's the daughter of actor and actress uh, Don Johnson and Melody Griffin. So it probably explains why she has a bit of a baby voice at times. Or, or tries to go, you know, as unique as her father would. But I don't know. I just... Again, I just couldn't handle her. I'm sorry I had to be harsh, but that's how I feel. Anyway, it was during the height of the German autumn to audition for the Marcos Dance Academy. From her arrival, she coincides with a sudden disappearance of a student named Patricia Hengel, not Pat Hengel. Uh, well, Pat for short for Patricia. This time she's played by Chloe Grace Moretz, only in a small role, which she disappeared after revealing to her psychotherapist, Dr. Joseph Camperer, who was actually played by Lutz Eisberdorf. I'm hoping I said it right. That the school matrons are in a coven of witches who worships the Free Mudders, which is a trio of witches who's once Rome Earth. Yeah, three of them, of course, are Mother Tenebramum, Mother Lacrimarum, and Mother Superium. 
Therefore, Susie befriends a wealthy classmate named Sarah Sims, played by Mia Goff, uh, after she was dancing really quickly to begin to attract the attention of the head artistic director and choreographer, Madame Blank, who's played by Till Smitten. And during the rehearsal, Patricia friend Olga Aganova, who's uh, played by Alina Fokinea, had accused the Matrix of being responsible for Patricia's disappearance as well as practicing witchcraft. She attempts to flee the school only to become disoriented and trapped in the room. Meanwhile, Susie performs the dance for Madame Blank and this is where she ends up being twisted like a pretzel. She actually pees and it just continues to go on while she was dancing. So at this rate, now they know that they put a spell on her. It, it, it really physically and biologically afflicted damage on Olga's body. The, the matrons find Olga's uh, body all, all twisted and mangled up. That they end up taking a bunch of hooks and stick it right into her and then just place her somewhere. Um, also, they begin the conspiracy to use Susie as the host body for Marcos. But meanwhile, Miss Griffin, who's a sheepish nation, had committed suicide. It, it, a lot of suspicion starts to happen, too, as it drags on. But Susie quickly climbs to the ranks of Blank's protege, earning the role of the protagonist in bulk. This was their most anticipated and upcoming performance that she's going to perform. Where she's going to join in with the rest of the girls. You know, just you know, wearing this red uh, but tattered uh, dress underneath um, their topless and, and underwear. And, and all, they're just going to keep doing that, practicing and be able to get it exactly right while well, one of the girls is going to be under the spell of the free mothers and that's going to go on and on oh yeah like especially when by the time they did the performance though Sarah actually uh, returns to the sanctum to find Patricia who's in wetter condition, but she discovers the matrons before the performance who main holes the holes in the floor and even causes Sarah to break her leg, yes, and it pops out. Sarah emerges midway through the performance, dancing her part in the hypnotic trance, which at this point they just cover her wounds with the spell, and that way she continues to go on joining with the group, and therefore it only gets worse when she got caught and and she collapsed in pain. But later, Madame Blank had to use Susie for inferring in the matron's affairs. But the following night, while dining with the matrons to celebrate the recital, the students are being put in a trance, all except for Susie. While Kemperer had disposed a large hook and Patricia's belongings in the river. He returns to this dacha in East Germany where he encounters his wife named Anke, who's played by, surprisingly enough, Jessica Harper. And yes, she speaks German in this movie, which I'm, I was a bit surprised to hear her and see her again. And it's sad that this was such a small role too because she, she still looks as beautiful as ever considering that she's now older and wiser. She isn't quite as young as she used to be. And it's sad because after that she disappears and then Kemperer has been taken by the witches, all the teachers around, and that's how they have to perform this particular um, dan dance to the deaf uh, you know, which coven that they were going for, so now they're performing. Yeah, and that's where we get to see how Susie accepts her fate as Marco's new vessel. 
which Sarah petitioned Olga had disemboweled to begin the Sabbath, and Blank had attempted to intervene in the ritual. I mean, therefore, Markle's attacks of uh, Blank. And yes, uh, Markle's, of course, is the witch, which her body was already been disfigured. She was pretty much blind. And then she's just going around, you know, just kissing every single one of them. And all, all their bodies exploded. Yeah, lots of blood and gore going around. And then she begins to take over Susie's body. And, and then she starts to become prancing around. And then set their signs and all that. And then all of them had died. And I mean everyone. All of their bodies. Um, even the man of blanks, his head gets cut off. All the blood starts to shoot directly. But then... During the next uh, day, you know, all all the teachers and everyone had started to clean up the mess that they made. Um, they even had to take uh, Madame Blanks' his body, although apparently she was barely alive when they put her head back together again. I was like, whoa. Camper had finally got out of there because apparently she, they used him for that, the spell. He was ready to get attacked. But then he just um, came back directly straight at home. He had the rest. And then that's where we begin. We then begin to learn about what just happened. With Susie now being the mother's superior, he visits Kemper and reveals that Anke had died. At uh, Fumastat, after being captured by the Nazis, upon touching him, Kemper suffers from a violent seizure that erases his memories. After which, leaves Susie immediately, while Kemper and Engel's initials are being covered on the wall with the Dasha, whose current occupants are applied to. And yeah, that's what led to a, a post-credit scene where Susie was in the streets at Berlin. But she as he stares something dispassionately before reaching out of the hand and smiles and rock away. I'm like, oh god. I just gave up. I really hated this version. I hate it so much. I actually put this on my worst list of 2018. When there's like so many better horror films to come out that year, even though, give or take, there are some worse ones. I mean, I wasn't the biggest fan of the Halloween 2018 reboot that came out that year, but the ones that came out that I liked, like um, Summer of 84, and even Hellfest, two of the better films to come out that year, didn't get enough credit it deserves. I mean, Summer of 84 doesn't even have a better Blu-ray release, only to give it a an MOD release. So you have to get it online. Hellfest, of course, uh, didn't do quite as well, and it gets a mixed reaction from critics, who basically get, which Ron Tomatoes just gives it a fucking 42 or perhaps 40 percent, which doesn't deserve. And but this piece of shit movie gets like a 65 percent, which should have been pretty much all the way down to 25 percent, in my opinion. I, I don't get it. There isn't a single scene I like except for this, the moment with um, Kemperer and Anke. And I wish we saw more of that. I, I wish the whole movie could have been more about them than this rest of this particular familiar story. Seeing that this was his homage to the 1977 film. It was nothing special. I mean, the dance sequences, um, even the ballet performance that they had to do, were nothing special at all. Nothing thrilling, nothing intriguing. 
nothing impressive of anything. There's too many gimmicks, too many cuts. You know, like, there's always the same old, you know, like, we have to cut to one location or to one scene after another. How the character starts to change from back to forward. And it, there's, like, so many um, gruesome images of blood and gore. None of them impressed me at all. Not even the the sceneries of the dark and murkyish that they put into it once they entered the the dance academy. It didn't have the brightness, the vivid colors, the technicolor aspect that the original film had. None of that at all. And I'm not surprised to say it here, but I'm going to say it anyway. But Dakota Johnson's performance in this movie is incredibly atrocious. You know, I, I swear to God, I think I probably got sick to my stomach of her opening her mouth, you know, spreading out some dialogue that she was getting out. Like, she's like saying that this this dance performance that she had to perform, she just, it makes me want me to fuck. And I, I know Madame Blank says, uh, like a man? No, like like an animal. <sighs> I mean, she, she sounds more like a fucking porn star if you think about it. Every time she speaks. And, she's, and she looks at times a little bloated. But, you know, there's even a scene in the movie where she actually sits in the toilet. Great, just what we want to see. Someone go into the bathroom, sitting in the toilet while uh, peeing just to get a urine sample. Like, I really need to see that. That sums it up. You know, let's just see her sit in the toilet. Or let's just see her, you know, gyrating or, or stretching, showing her flexibility, you know, even show her nudity, yeah, exposing it and all of that. I mean, that's what we want to see. I mean, she did it in Fifty Shades of Shit. You have the Fifty Shades of Grey trilogy, then she could do it again. I, I think that's another reason why people want to see this movie, is just to see her expose her nudity. I don't care. Uh, the movie only made $7.7 .7 million out of its $20 million, so it wasn't really a hit. Not surprised. But it, it probably had the strongest opening as they could, but it doesn't make a difference. I mean, the rest of the film just went straight from Amazon uh, Fire Stick TV uh, through the Amazon Prime. So you'll be able to find it. That's another thing, too. There's a lot of better choices on Amazon than this movie. Undone, I would rather watch. That's so much better. But that's a TV series, though. You know, e even for that that particular um, runtime, that could be better. Because their runtime, which is only in 153 minutes at the most, which is two, uh, 2 hours and 26 minutes, almost nearly 2 hours and 30 minutes, it's just a drag. I mean, it's a slow burn film. It doesn't work. Okay, I love films that do have slow burns sometimes, okay? There's nothing wrong with that. Because that way they can focus on the story, yet alone the characters. Like, there's something that's that we want to be able to find out for ourselves. Try, something that we have to intrigue. But that just doesn't seem to work that way. I didn't care for the special effects. I didn't care about everything that went into it. I don't even care about the story or what happens to the victims because none of them even matter. All except for Kemperer and Anke, and it's just cut out short. And maybe it could have been more about just Kemperer. I think that the whole film could have been just mostly about Kemperer and Anke and, and the way things were happening instead of this whole half of the film just being 
1977 movie only in entwined with anything else. It sucks. In fact, I'm just going to avoid it. I mean, it wasn't fun revisiting this movie. And it sure didn't make me feel any better anyway. But I'll say this. If you like the movie, that's fine. Okay? But it's not for me. I'm just going to stick to the 1977 film the way it was meant to be. If I really want to watch The Free Mutters, I would rather just watch the um, Argento Trilogy following Inferno and The Mother of Tears, which to me I think those films are better than anything this version has. Now Till Swidden, going back to her, she's a wonderful actress. She plays a dual role. One is Madame Blank, but the other is Marcos, who happens to be male. Which, she was given a prosthetic penis and all. Yeah, there's even a scene where, during the Dance to the Death, uh, at the climax, which, yeah, everyone just says Marcos and all, because they revived him. Uh, apparently she's just wasted in this movie, no doubt. Uh, that's too bad. It's completely shallow, totally tedious, you know, over pretentious, tries to be as stylish as ever, and it's incredibly boring. I was bored to death watching this mess. And what's worse, it's not scary. The previous film was scary. It was bound to be scary. This one didn't scare me at all. I wasn't really that impressed by the violence and gore that this movie had. Like I was hoping I would. I wanted to. It could have been great. But it's not. And that's sad. Story wasn't really impressive at all. I mean, the fact that it's divided into acts and an epilogue, like it's trying to be like a Quinn Martin production. I mean, uh, well, actually, they started doing that even before Quinn Martin, but. And something Tarantino would have done, but geez, I think they knew they were going to go for that. And Mike DiGlocha, I'm not so sure if he produced this, but he once said that he hated the original film. I, I once found an article about that, and I felt like I was so pissed. Like, now I can see why he's full of shit. And he's now a hack. I don't even know if Lucha is a hack, too, because the way he, he considered this as a his personal f film to date, might as well just be his, um, his worst. So, screw this version. Fuck this remake. I'm sticking to Argento's masterpiece. This is basically Lucha's masturbation. <laughs> if you have to say lightly. Anyway, that's Suspiria. What an insult to my intelligence. And I give the film zero stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later, much later. Bye!